This is a problem-solving screencast on structure elucidation in organic chemistry. So by now we've learned how to interpret infrared spectra, we've learned mass spectra, and now we're beginning to learn proton and C13 NMR. So we're going to use all of these instrumental techniques in predicting the uh, structure of an unknown compound. So the first thing that we want to start with is examining the molecular formula. So we're fortunate that in this problem the molecular formula is actually given to us as C4H8O2. If it were not given to us we would have to use the mass of the parent ion at 88 to get a rough uh, estimation of what the molecular formula could be. So starting from C4 H8O2, the first thing that we want to do is calculate the degrees of unsaturation. So oxygen neither adds nor subtracts to the molecular formula, so what we're going to be using is C4 H8. If the molecule were fully saturated, it would be C4 and then N equals 4, so the number of hydrogens is 2N plus 2. So 2 times 4 is 8 plus 2 is 10. When we subtract what we're given from the fully saturated, we see that we're going to end up with H2. So we need to divide by 2 because that's going to tell us how many equivalents of molecular hydrogen uh, belong in the molecular formula. And that actually gives us one degree of unsaturation. So at this point we're kind of done using the mass spectrum because we have the molecular formula. Um, we don't need to use it uh, at, at this point going forward. So with the one degree of unsaturation, we can go to the, the IR spectrum next and look at the, the different regions to see if we can pull out what the major functional group is. So what stands out is this peak here at 1741 wave numbers. So this is indicative of a carbonyl group. Remember that's a CO double bond. So that sp2 hybridized carbon has two points of attachment. So right now what we can do is since we we've we've assigned that the CO double bond is 1 degree of unsaturation and the molecular formula has 1 degree of unsaturation we can subtract that out from the molecular formula C4 H8O2 and we know from the IR that CO belongs to the carbonyl so we're left with C3 H8O and this has zero degrees of unsaturation in it. So now we have to go and utilize the C13 and proton NMR data to figure out the connectivity of the rest of these atoms. Let's first look at the C13 NMR spectrum and specifically this piece of data here, the proton decoupled NMR. We don't have to worry about this peak here at approximately 80 parts per million. That's the solvent in which the sample was run. Let's just count the number of signals we see. We have 1, 2, 3, and 4. So what that's telling us, the compound has four unique carbon atoms. So we know from the molecular formula there's four carbons. Each carbon has its own peak, so there's, there's no symmetry in the molecule. What else does this piece of data tell us? Well, 
the the peak around say 180 parts per million that's going to belong to our sp2 hybridized carbon of the carbonyl and another C13 experiment which is shown on this graph is the, the depth. This particular piece of information tells us how many, car how many hydrogens are bonded to each carbon. So what these arrows mean if the peak is going down it's a CH2 group. So we, we scan across we have a peak going down that's a CH2. that has two points of attachment and going across uh, a peak that's up can be a methyl group or a, a CH group so since there's two of these that are up it, it, at this point it's can be either one right this can be CH or CH3 this can be CH or CH3 we can now go to the proton NMR spectrum to help us differentiate between those two carbons. So again, we can use a couple pieces of information here. We have the chemical shift. That tells us the, the electronic environment in which the hydrogen sits. So the other piece of information is this line here called the integration. So if we were to measure the height of that integration for each of these peaks, and then we divide by the minimum height, which is going to be this one here, we would find the ratio of these peaks to be 3 to 3 to two. So what is that telling us? That's, that's telling us for these unique hydrogen peaks, this peak has three hydrogens, so it's, it's got to be a CH3 group. This unique peak has three hydrogens. And then this unique peak has two, so it's a CH2 group. So what else does that tell us? Well, we have one, two, three unique types of hydrogen. So we can go back to this experiment of the depth in the, the carbon-13 NMR and say that each of these is a CH3 group. So each of these has a, a single point of attachment. So let's consider all the information we know so far. We have a carbonyl. It's going to have two points of attachment. A CH2 group has two points. CH3, CH3. So notice that we've we've still not accounted for the second oxygen well if we look at the, the the proton NMR data now we see this peak that integrates to two hydrogens and it's sitting out around 4 ppm so what makes that signal different from what's at 2 and what's at 1 here well, from our, our charts in the Solomon textbook, we know that the chemical shift is dependent upon the electronic environment. So peaks that occur around 1 are, are typically just CH3. Things around 2 are allylic groups. So they're, they're next to a double bond of some kind. Moving out to 4 and 5 parts per million, those are bonded to an electronegative atom. So if we bond this CH2 group next to an oxygen, 
Well, we've now differentiated it from these two methyls. So this, this shift away from our, our starting point at zero can be attributed to the oxygen. Now what we have to do is put all these pieces together so that it makes sense. Well, we have a CH3 group that appears as a singlet. So remember from our multiplicity, the n plus 1 rule, there can be nothing bonded uh, next to this uh, CH3 with hydrogen. So it, it has to be bonded to something without hydrogens. So let's redraw CH3. And we need to bond it to a carbon that's not bearing any hydrogens. And based on the chemical shift of 2, it's going to be allylic. So it, it's going to be bonded to the sp2 hybridized carbon. This is an allylic carbon. And now we need to bond CH3 to CH2 and then this oxygen to something. So we can bond oxygen here, CH2, and then we bond that CH2 to the remaining methyl group. So this proposal for a structure of, of this molecular formula fits all the data that we're given. We have uh, hydrogen peak integrating to 2. It has a quartet type structure, which means it's, it's bonded to a carbon bearing three hydrogens. We have a singlet shown here as the methyl group. It has three hydrogens, no hydrogens next door. And then finally, we have another unique hydrogen system that appears as a triplet. So using the n plus 1 rule means its neighbor has to have two hydrogens. So in conclusion, this has been a tutorial screencast on how to solve problems using multiple pieces of spectral data uh, that we've seen so far in Organic Chemistry 1.